Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the moon. I am your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray, and today I am joined by my esteemed co-hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. Uh, so today, uh, the ETH 2.0 upgrade is going to take over Bitcoin, apparently. Uh, the French Central Bank will be holding Bitcoin, uh, apparently, again, uh, and we're going to be discussing an interesting conspiracy theory uh, and much more. So stick around to hear the news. Um, first off, uh, Ricardo, how's it going? How has your week been? What have you been up to? Fill us in. My week's been great, and um, I've just been working on a lot of different things, I guess. Nothing too monumental. Okay, nice. And uh, Jerry, how about you, mate? Yeah, pretty same. Um, it's pretty much been a boring week. Um, just, you know, same old, same old. So nothing special. Ah, fair enough. Um, I say nothing crazy going on here. I've been running some Twitter spaces and Clubhouse stuff, um, but nothing much else. I guess um, one thing we should point out to anyone listening um, is that there's a competition ongoing on Twitter, BitRefill's Twitter at the moment. Um, so you basically have to just make a video about what your moon is. Uh, and you, yeah, you have two chances to win a $100 gift card. Um, so if you're interested in that, head over and uh, check it out and enter for the competition. Um, could win. Um, which would be awesome. Uh, all right. Well, uh, well, we should probably just go straight into the, the podcast, uh, straight into the news uh, without any more delay. Uh, so first off, uh, Ricardo, hit me with uh, your news for this week. My story is called French politician wants Bank de France to hold Bitcoin. So there's a French politician named Jean-Michel Nice, and he signed a petition to give the Central Bank of France the ability to buy Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. He's citing the purchase of Bitcoin by the likes of Tesla and MicroStrategy. He thinks that basically in order for France to maintain their, their strong economic position, they need to buy Bitcoin so that they're not in a financially weak position within the next five to 10 years. The reason this is remarkable is because just a year ago, it would be unheard of for a central bank to purchase Bitcoin. I, if you'd said to me, yeah, about a year ago, oh, yeah, you know, um, the central bank of any country will consider buying Bitcoin. I've been, I would have laughed you out of the room pretty much, <laughs> probably <laughs> straight away. I'm like, nah, I don't think so. I would have called you like a disillusional, disillusioned maxi or something. You'd be like, yeah, you're getting a bit too over the top there, buddy. But um, looks like it's potentially on the cards, right? Like, uh, I suppose it's just one politician at the moment. So it's not, you know, uh concrete news but it's a potential thing at, at the moment um yeah it's it's risky uh because obviously it's still a it's still a volatile asset no matter what anyone says bitcoin at the moment and uh but yeah i guess it's like uh it's comparable to a central bank storing more and more gold uh in addition to uh in addition to their fiat currency so could work i don't know jerry what's your uh, what's your thoughts on that i guess first off on the re- on, on the on the sort of realistic ability that it's going to happen and uh, also on where do you think it's a good idea? First of all, duh, <laughs> took him long, <laughs> took him long enough. Uh, this was uh, I, I thought like this would be the like the obvious trajectory. Um, or this is the part that most people thought that this is where Bitcoin would end up. You know, gradually, if we were gonna, if you're talking about uh, adoption, then this is where we expected to end up. Kinda, there has to be some kind of a compromise on the side of the traditional finance and to, in their views of Bitcoin. So I expect more central banks to begin to, you know, have this kind of this sort of uh, discussions around, you know, um, buying Bitcoin and, you know, um, adding it to as part of their, you know, reserves and in their treasury. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Like it, it does fit in with that vision of like the one world currency or at least Bitcoin being the most important currency or store of value whether there's any others around as well sort of thing um so yeah i guess it fits in with the bitcoin as ideal right i suppose um although i guess if every country starts stacking their sats where's the chance for the people to stack their sats i suppose it kind of does go against that a little bit too but what's your i guess what's your thoughts on this ricardo like um you obviously mentioned the article but uh what, i think what's if, your, you know are you, are you pro this or yeah you think? I'm, I'm extremely pro this because i think if one central bank starts buying bitcoin all central banks will start buying Bitcoin and it's going to really stimulate hyper Bitcoinization. Once every central bank is in an arms race trying to get Bitcoin, um, anyone who's holding Bitcoin is going to become fabulously wealthy. 
No, that's true. I think like that uh, it'd definitely be beneficial. I suppose for me, I'm like, okay, guys, let's just let me have one more dip so I can accumulate a decent amount of Bitcoin and, and then we can, you know, then we can start buying it. Okay. <laughs> just give give me one more dip. That's what that's why everyone always says that every time a bull run's like <laughs> happening. Um, but yeah, no, okay. Also, that's, that's a pretty cool piece of news, actually. Like, whilst it's not, you know, I guess just one politician, but it, it's indicative and it shows a changing times. And at least if it's not gonna happen this year could be you know at least i could think that it would be reasonably likely to happen in the next two years three years kind of thing so that's quite interesting i'll follow in with my news uh for this week well it was it was reported a few places um but i've got a, a link here with the title ethereum could overtake bitcoin following eth to upgrade masari analyst says and essentially what it says is uh, Ryan Watkins, senior research analyst at Masari, has predicted that Ethereum could eventually overtake Bitcoin as the largest cryptocurrency in the world once that ETH2 upgrade is... Sorry, I, I always call it 2.0, so I'm going to say 2.0. 2.0 upgrade is complete. Um, essentially what he said is, yeah, um, once the shift to proof of stake is done, uh, it may be more secure and it may be faster and, and have a sort of better uh, monetary policy um, than Bitcoin. <laughs> Yeah, what's your uh, what's your guys' thoughts on on this article, guys? I'm, I'm interested to hear. I, for one, totally disagree with it being more secure or that it's going to have a better monetary policy. But I'm interested to see how it all plays out with the transition to proof of stake. It's tough. I, I always I never really know what to say about Ethereum because I quite like the idea. I think it's like, hey, it's amazing that they've managed to achieve what they have so far, even though they haven't achieved the actual goal yet um and the team's done a good job i think i even have like an ethereum t-shirt somewhere that i got a while back i got i'm a yeah i like it but there's also that problem that i mean there's a quite a few issues with ethereum for example you can see right now with them trying to sort of force this um upgrade on on all the miners um and the miners sort of threatening to do a 51 percent attack and all sorts of things like that and it's like they're kind of whilst i get they're trying to drive progress which makes sense they're also kind of just forcing it and kind of doing the opposite of what Bitcoin's done, where it's like the people decide. They're like, no, people don't decide. People decide. <laughs> Press button. Um, it feels very much like that. Um, so I guess that's quite frustrating. Uh, but also there's, there's the issue that like, uh, I think over 60% of Ethereum nodes are hosted on Amazon Web Services as well. Um, I might be wrong, but I believe it's about that figure, which is not very decentralized or secure, really, as far as I'm concerned. Jerry, what's your, what's your thoughts on this one, buddy? First of all, this is not the first time we've had um, the term um, shit talking. We, Ethereum has, you know, has always had this, uh, this, they've always talked about, you know, Ethereum having so much potential and, you know, being able to do this and being able to surpass Bitcoin. We all remember the flipping in and how that, you know, panned out. So I don't think there's going to be an ex any any change in the future. This is, this is how it's always going to be. Bitcoin is always be going to be number one. For obvious reasons, I am not so optimistic about the future of uh, um, Ethereum, especially as the transition to uh, proof of stake. Well, we all see proof of stake is fundamentally flawed, especially the governance of proof of stake is, you know, fundamentally flawed. And because of that, there are other blockchains. You know, Ethereum does have some, has have the uh, it does have the network network effects, but other blockchains, you know, technically they are you know better. In terms of you know performance, and Ethereum has they never you know cared about decentralization as, as they claim to care about it now because you know when one when Bitcoin was where you know in 2017 Bitcoin had in you know, a period of high fees and Ethereum were like you know I, I remember Vitalik saying that you know the money of the internet shouldn't cost um, transactional fees for the money of the internet shouldn't cost more than you know five cents. Now it's come back to bite him in the ass. So if he understood you know that blockchains you know that um, if you understood blockchains and the you know one kilobyte um, uh, one MB um, tra um, block um, transaction um, I think um, what they call it a block limit or block uh, hard cap and he understood all that then why was he you know attacking Bitcoin for having you know sl slow confirmation times and you know high fees when the same thing is now happening to Ethereum and they're now so concerned about you know decentralization I think they do not care about decentralization they only care about the fact that other blockchains are coming to eat up you know. Ethereum's launch. So, uh, it, so that I say made the best uh, blockchain win. Sounded like a Cardano fan there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>
Is that is that you Charles Hoskinson? I I, is that Charles Hoskinson I hear there? <laughs> you know who I am. Out on your farm there, Charles. No, yeah, that's uh, that's fair enough. I, yeah, I, I guess like um, yeah, I, it's, it's always a tough one for me. Like I, I never like to make a definitive statement. Like it, it's entire, it's theoretically possible that it could happen, but I don't think that odds are on the side of Ethereum for this one. Um, would be my answer um but i'm interested to see how this 2.0 upgrade goes like it'd be awesome to see the gas fees get reduced because they're a complete joke at the moment so yeah i'm more concerned uh, about when and if they do eventually you know launch because i've been hearing about you know, 2.0 for like uh two years now yeah it's been going for a while but i think they are like looking to force it through this year but we'll see i suppose i had a couple points i wanted to bring up ethereum and, and the philosophy behind ethereum and bitcoin are fundamentally different uh, when Vitalik wanted to launch uh, some of the ideas that they implemented in Ethereum on Bitcoin, he was warned that it's not smart to have all this stuff happening on the base chain because the nodes would not be able to store the blockchain. It would grow exponentially and it would become difficult for nodes to store a complete copy of the blockchain, which is why um, a lot of the Ethereum nodes that exist are on Amazon Web Services because it's just not feasible to run one on your laptop. The other thing is... When Ethereum launched, they also had this knowledge and they knew that it couldn't scale and they knew that putting smart contracts on the base chain would make it impossible to scale. So uh, this switch to proof of stake is really um, kind of risky because as Max Hillebrand said in my interview with him, we'll never see things like ring signatures on Bitcoin because it's just too much of a change to the architecture of Bitcoin. It's, it's just too much of a fundamental change to to switch to that. So um, for Ethereum to be a functioning public blockchain and make a consensus mechanism switch, it, it's really, really um, like a risky change. So that's why I said I'm really interested to see how it plays out. Like I'm watching this um, with a lot of attention. I, wa I want to see how, how they're able to pull it off. Yeah, uh, I guess. Fast. Yeah, I was going to say uh, move fast, break things. Um, I think that's the Ethereum slogan. <laughs> no i like i'll um yeah I, uh, to be honest like i'll be super happy if it succeeds right i mean like the more success we see in the cryptocurrency industry the better in my opinion and i guess the more competition for bitcoin the better probably as well because i guess competition always incentivizes growth in a good way so hey awesome um bring it on please um give it a shot is i guess what i'm gonna say and and hey, I'm, a, I'm a fan of ethereum i think i hold some as well so i've uh, not got a problem with it um but yeah just i've, I've got my issues with ethereum i suppose as well okay cool uh jerry if you got any news you wanted to uh bring up or are you all good for this week yeah i heard um, um morgan stanley is offering their worthy clients can now buy uh, bitcoin so i think that's a pretty huge news considering their previous stance yeah i guess like there's been a lot of institutional stuff this week actually like visa came out and said they were going to uh essentially do a paypal and try and implement um implement uh, Bitcoin and, and other cryptocurrencies. Uh, Grayscale, they did like Chainlink and a few other altcoins uh, for like the trust. There's been quite a few different things that the uh, companies that are interested. Um, and I think uh, that was it. Today, uh, Brazil's uh, Securities Exchange Committee, they came out and said that they were approving um, a bit the first Bitcoin ETF in Latin America. So there's some really cool stuff going on uh, at the moment, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, what you say about Morgan Stanley is interesting because it's very much like I, I'm always a bit like uh, I see all these different fast, uh, funds and trusts and big bank companies, big bank companies, big banks uh, coming out and saying like, oh, we're going to join Bitcoin. We're going to do this. Like, here's how you buy it. And then all the like Bloomberg's and all this sort of stuff are saying, oh, it's time to buy it. Gold's old, all this kind of stuff. But that kind of makes it's almost it almost makes me not want to buy Bitcoin, even though I'm a fan of, of Bitcoin. Because it's like all this comes out, and you're like, have we reached the top then? Because like I can swear, you know, like <laughs> gold's on its way down, and it's almost hitting like an accumulation point, And you're telling me not to buy gold. Bitcoin's just gone parabolic, and potentially could keep going parabolic. But you've got to be sensible, right? As much as I'm a massive fan of Bitcoin, it has just had a crazy parabolic shift. Like buy the thing that's already risen a ton or buy the thing that's on its way down is reaching accumulation point and has been around for thousands of years. So it's kind of like, I'm not trying to make this the gold podcast, but at the same time, it's like, I worry when these kinds of things happen. I start thinking, hmm, is now the time to, to sell and then maybe buy a dip. But I don't know what your guys' thoughts are. Like it's good for the industry, but um, it, to me, it's almost like potentially signifying a top, <laughs> basically. <laughs> The fundamentals behind gold are the same as the fundamentals behind Bitcoin. Uh, 
they're both uh, finite supply. So with all the stimulus and the inflation and, and the bailouts and stuff that are happening, where central banks are just printing money, they're both going to do well in the near future. Silver potentially too, in my opinion. I'm not so sure that um, fundamentals behind um, Bitcoin, they, I, I do not think they sh both share the same fundamentals. Is gold really finite in supply? Yes, but really it's unknown. It's, uh, it's finite, but unknown. So like, we haven't got it all yet, but it is finite. Right. Like there is only a certain amount on the earth, right? Like that's, that's guaranteed. You can't just whiz it out of there. Yeah, I guess asteroid mining. But yeah, it's, you've got to mine it and everything. But yeah, so and it's obviously it's not like the the, the, bit, the the key difference is that Bitcoin is its own payment network and more medium of exchange and the currency all in one, which is kind of, well, the first of that really. But gold is not, obviously gold is not its own. You know, you have to give it to someone or sell it. Yeah, somewhere. first you, you, you do have to kind of you know, consider the price action on, on, on both assets. And gold's not really that exciting, especially not, not at least not anymore. You know, it's been, you know, it's pretty much been a stable coin. If gold was an asset in the crypto industry, then I'm pretty sure almost nobody would trade it, except to hedge, probably. People just hedge gold. They do not buy gold, to, you know, uh, in the hopes that they might, you know, appreciate in, in, a, in significantly value. Yeah, I, I guess like it's a it's another way to not own fiat, right? And like, because gold has gone up against fiat a fairly good amount since, what, 70s, whenever um fiat like in most countries stopped being gold backed or in a lot of key countries so I, I, I can see how like gold appeals to many bitcoiners right um i can totally see that and and vice versa unless you're not just, not just not just bitcoiners millennials too yeah or, or libertarians or austrian economics fans or whatever um but yeah i think it's uh, I think it's interesting like but say i just yeah i think it's cool that like morgan stanley are, uh eat, you know eating their uh in their words a little bit but at the same time i just I, I see so much of this stuff all over the like financial news and i just start thinking hmm you know are they, are they gonna try and like dip the price of this bad boy before we rock it off again you know like, right um so yeah what we'll do next is we will discuss the uh the game segment okay and it's the same as last week we've got the fake news headline guess the fake news headline uh, i'm gonna read out three uh, news article headlines and one will be fake uh, I enjoyed this last week, so I decided we should uh, continue with that. <clears throat> so, are you guys ready? Uh, no buzzers, because obviously there's no need. Um, right, the first headline. A half-eaten sausage solves nine-year-old German burglary case. That's number one. <laughs> number two. Boots, the chemist, refuses to apologise after inappropriate advert urges Scottish people to treat mums to sex toys for Mother's Day. Number three, Brits, so British people, if for anyone listening, Brits backed Arnold Schwarzenegger to terminate any alien invasion, study reveals. Uh, so guys, uh, have a second, just think it over, okay? Um, I'll read these out quick again. Half-eaten sausage solves nine-year-old German burglary case. Boots chemist refuses to apologize after inappropriate advert urges Scottish people to treat mums to sex toys for Mother's Day. And Brits backed Arnold Schwarzenegger to terminate any alien invasion, study reveals. So uh, Jerry, you won last week. I was pretty surprised actually, you kind of like had a good theory going. So uh, you're gonna go first, okay? Uh, which story? <laughs> Do you think is the fake story, sir? And give me a little bit of a give me the give me the brain reasoning, the thinking here. Give me, you know, I want to see what's going yeah. on. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go for number two. Okay. Uh, Why the is rationale that? behind the rationale behind it is pretty much the same. I'm looking for, you know, this is 2021, and 2020 was pretty like a you know crazy year, and 21 not so different. So, yeah, it you just have to go with something that. So that doesn't, doesn't feel so out of this world. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, if, if it's not crazy enough, then that's my pick. Okay, number two. Okay, so you've gone for the boots chemists. Uh, what about you, Ricardo? Do I have to pick a different one? Because I was going to No, 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 no. Okay, I was no, going to pick, pick number two as well. Okay, um, so you're both hedging your bets. Why, why are you going for it? Same as Jerry or? Well, because I think um, that refuse, I don't think they refuse to apologize. I think they probably did recommend the sex toys, but... Um, in the age of cancel culture, I believe that they apologized. I just gotta, I just gotta, you know, just gotta clap for a second here. 
<laughs> Shout out to Ricardo and I guess Jerry as well. You guys both nailed it. Um, but Ricardo got it on the on the money, like absolutely <laughs> on the money. Okay, so I'll, I'll run through each one for you guys out there so you understand what's going on. Uh, the first one, yes. Yeah, so uh, a half-eaten sausage did solve a nine-year-old German burglary case. Um, and the thing is, this detective work really cut the mustard. Um, so yeah, what happened here was uh, basically... A <laughs> Appears like this guy left a, a, a helped himself to half a sausage when he broke in someone's house uh, in 2012 during <laughs> breaking, and um, then he was and that was that they kind of kept the DNA right and they put it onto a system and then French police uh, took a DNA sample catching him doing some other crime like very recently a violent one and uh, they matched it and with the German sausage so <laughs> they managed <laughs> they managed to solve the, the case which is amazing um, the second one is indeed fake. So the real story is uh, Boots, um, and it's just Boots, but I put in the chemist for anyone not understanding what's going on. Boots apologize after inappropriate advert urges Scots to treat mums to sex toys for Mother's Day. So um, yeah, uh, it says here, stunned retired prison officer Andrew Whiting from Fife was scrolling through his newsfeed when he had to do a double take at the Boots ad. Um, so they've apologized. Um, essentially, it, it, <laughs> Yeah, what you had was an advert, like with a nice, a nice family advert, and then beneath it, it was saying sort of like for every kind of mum, and it was recommending products or whatever, uh, and it was done by a robot clearly, and those products were of a certain kind. <laughs> so it's quite, quite funny, um, but yeah, they apologised. So Ricardo, you absolutely killed it on that one. And the last one, uh, which I thought was surely can't be true, but apparently is. Um, is that yes, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Um, apparently, we what they did is a survey, um, and they had a large number of celebrities and public figures like politicians, scientists, all these people you could choose from. And they did a survey with um, over 2,000 adults in Britain, and the majority chose Arnold Schwarzenegger to solve an alien invasion over, like, you know the Prime Minister, the President of the United States, <laughs> all of these people who could potentially actually help. They chose uh, a good old Arnie. Um, I guess they've been watching too many films. Um, so yeah, that's the, the true story there. Um, so yeah, that's a, a wrap up on that one. I hope anyone out there enjoyed that. We've got two one at the moment on that one. Uh, Jerry is up, but Ricardo, I'm impressed. You can you can get a, a bonus point for the uh, fantastic logic there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so on to the open segment. We've got um, I believe a, a theory to discuss uh, this week. Um, rather than a piece of news that was uh, posted uh, on Zero Hedge. So, uh, Ricardo, take it away, please, and give us a, an outline of what's going on. All right. This article is called Here Comes Bitcoin's Big Test, The Empire Strikes Back. So the article is trying to make the case that lately various governments have been testing out the arguments that they'll use to shut down or co-opt crypto. It then goes on to cite Christine Lagarde of the ECB, where... She has a quote saying that there needs to be regulation at a global level, because if there's an escape, then that escape will be used. She then goes on to say that the European Central Bank is going to add their own digital euro within five years. It also gives a quote from Janet Yellen, who says that she doesn't think that Bitcoin is widely used as a transaction mechanism. And to the extent that it's used, she fears that it's often for illicit finance and it's an extremely inefficient way of conducting transactions. Uh, then she goes on to FUD about the energy consumption. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Yeah, I, I mean, I can see how that could potentially be true, right? Like um, there's a lot of like FUD and negativity that comes out of the ECB um, and other organizations out there. Uh, and governments are clearly not pro it because understandably from their point of view they want to be able to control the currency and they want to be able to continue with their current monetary policy and their current it just makes sense like they don't want change and they want to keep power i mean governments essentially are uh, invented to pretty much control us even though they're made to work for us so i can completely see this being fairly legitimately true um especially with the cbdc's coming um, like the digital yuan is yen yuan is, is doing pretty well it seems with their rollouts and their testing so um yeah, I guess the energy thing really winds me up. Um, I, I get it a lot. Uh, it seems to be the newest thing. Um, from anyone who doesn't like or just doesn't understand Bitcoin or whatever, I just, if I post something on Facebook or whatever, I get kind of hit with this, like, oh, the energy's terrible, blah, blah, blah. It's not great. 
it could be better i'm sure like you know obviously it's you know it's not fantastic but there's so many reasons as to why it's not that big a deal essentially i mean you compare it to gold compare it to the current financial system and then there's uh, another point that andreas antonopoulos made uh, on it as well where essentially he was saying that you're actually creating something of value with using this energy so you are creating like you're essentially mining a Bitcoin and then that gets reinvested. So there's quite a lot more to it than, than meets the eye. Uh, what's your thoughts, Jerry? Yeah, I, I agree with that, that, what you said. When you said um, there have been certain waves of, um, I wouldn't call it misinformation, but uh, FUD, but I've been seeing lots of articles, you know, trying to bring up the uh, um, Bitcoin's energy consumption, you know, trying to, you know, f- f- spear, f- basically fear mongering. And, I was thinking, where are all these articles coming from? It's been like wave after wave ever since the price of Bitcoin started going up. It's been like wave after wave after wave. I'm thinking, could this be some kind of uh, propaganda? You know, and I think there's there's there there are efforts to trying to take advantage of the large number of mis- um, under informed people, you know, about Bitcoin and try to you know spread that you know fear mongering you know across across and spread that fear so that they can now you know. You know, give they can now say, okay, this is why we're going to regulate or ban Bitcoin or you know, go up to you know, whatever way they're going to do it. But they now want to you know, present a valid reason to the to the uh to the vast number of people, you know, to the majority of people that this is why they are going to do what they're going to do, you know, as a way of trying to you know, regulate Bitcoin. And they always bring this point about you know, Bitcoin used for illicit transaction when the facts clearly say that. Less than one percent of Bitcoin transactions are used for um, um, illegal, you know, activities. So why do they keep bringing up this idea of, you know, that Bitcoin is used for, you know, uh, illegal transactions and stuff like that? Why? It, it kind of, you know, irks me a lot, and I cannot understand it. And um, yeah, what, what I'm, I'm just thinking, what can, what can we do to actually, you know, counter or combat this, you know, wave of misinformation? I agree with you, Jerry. Uh, the article also goes on to say that it mentions India's ban and it also mentions China's digital yuan, which Lawrence just mentioned. And it's saying that the ban or date run digital currencies are not random. It's a coordinated laying of the groundwork for a move against cryptos by government. It's going Mm -hmm. to basically lay down the groundwork for the introduction of digital national currencies and eventually a digital global currency run by the IMF or some other monetary consortium. So to combat this, I think we need to use Bitcoin and uh, Mm -hmm. reject whatever system that they they put forth. Pretty much. I mean, you've got enough stout Bitcoiners out there that who even if the value does drop to a dollar or 10 cents or five cents are still going to be holding it, still going to be using it probably. So just keep doing it basically is the answer to that one. Yeah, you're right. Have people power win. Um, But yeah, I guess on the point of the energy, like it's difficult because the energy side of things itself, the problem isn't, it's not itself. It's not FUD in itself. It's the way that it gets constantly promoted and it's like this attacking constant attack like bill gates is constantly going on about it blah 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 but yeah it does use a lot of energy that is indisputable it's not great like we could do better obviously and like not all of the energy is clean or green we can do better like there definitely is a criticism there like you know you can always improve things right like i I personally believe that like bitcoin we can improve like we can make sure that like mining is done or, or encourage mine to be done in a clean green manner and i'm sure there's some incentives we can have like better layer two scanning solutions, et cetera, that maybe will, I don't think that really helped, but maybe you know, improve the, the energy, but it's nothing really when you compare it to a lot of other energy consuming resources. So it's a bit far, it's a bit legit, I guess is the way I put it. That, that argument that Bitcoin consumes energy or it doesn't really make sense. We have to use energy somehow. It's not Bitcoin's fault that energy is currently not, you know, it's currently at the stage where it's, um, the source is not clean. So. It's not Bitcoin's fault. I cannot. We use energy. We use energy for so many different things. Um, Bitcoin isn't consuming energy. It's actually taking. You know, if you, if Bitcoin wasn't using that energy, that energy wouldn't be used. So it's kind of converting useless energy into something actually very valuable. And if people are so very concerned about you know, um, uh, Bitcoin's energy consumption, then please, by all means, invent. Give us cleaner, renewable source. You know, sources of you know energy and Bitcoin won't complain. So uh, I think Bitcoin kind of like, I've seen the argument and, and I agree, Bitcoin kind of incentivizes, you know, uh, 
the creation of cleaner and more renewable sources of energy. And I think that is that. For instance, I, I see cer certain miners re uh, migrating or relocate, relocating their farms to you know um, places with cheaper and you know um, cheaper and cleaner energy sources. And I think isn't that the kind of behavior that we want to encourage? So I think we're actually heading to that point. Trying to you know force the argument or force the conversation seems like they have you know an ulterior motive, and it seems that is going to it's going to be you know going forward. I think if they want to displace Bitcoin by planting some, they want to lay the groundwork, groundwork, you know, for CBDCs. And to do that, they have to, you know, they have to, you know, give Bitcoin a kind of negative image and plant that image in the minds of people so that people would, wouldn't want Bitcoin anymore, but rather they, you know, want to go for CBDCs. And, you know, even they did the same thing to Libra. Now, Libra is basically, uh, I wouldn't call it dead. It's just somewhere, it's just in limbo. You know, we have we, there was so much talk about Libra coming in and doing stuff, but you know, governments thought maybe they couldn't have you know couldn't have you no know, control over it and started you know trash talking it in the press and in the media. Now Libra is you know stuck uh, stuck in limbo, and so it's, you know they've halted progress and nothing is happening inside of Libra. I think they're going to play the same game with Bitcoin. So I think we have to be alert to their schemes and try to educate people about you know what is actually going on. I can totally see like an article, right? Or like an advert on my te television and like a BBC advert, okay? And I can see this thing like, ah, oh, Bitcoin uses, and like, you know, you know, like the old, um, you wouldn't steal a car or whatever, like those like anti-piracy things. Bitcoin uses enough energy to like kill this sheep or something. And then you've got like this horrible sheep or something. And then you've got the digital Euro or like digital pound. 0.000 something kilowatt energy used per like transaction and then they're like you know totally centralized and completely controlled and exactly the same as the pound except it's only digital so therefore even worse because if you do something that breaks the law or we want to fine you we can just automatically fine you and withdraw that amount from your bank balance without you having any choice over the matter um yeah i'm not a fan um i'm with you i guess my actually, thing yeah sorry i go ahead yeah, I'm actually worried about how far you know they'd be willing to, willing to go with their propaganda. You know, um, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if one day I turn on the TV and like I see uh hundred thousand of people dead, uh, Bitcoin hit mining, uh, Bitcoin mining uh, causes destruction or something of that sort. It's it's it, you're laughing, but it's something that is actually going to be very possible if Bitcoin doesn't go away soon. You get me? Yeah, so, no, you're right. You're right. I get okay. you. You're de yeah, so yeah, that's, definitely. That's my feeling. I think we're all, I mean, I know you haven't said too much on it, Ricardo, so apologies. We've kind of uh, nattered over it. But wow. like, I, I, I think like I can see that I, I personally, I, I'm assuming from from you raising the point that I'm kind of not obviously 100% on board with this theory that like, that's what they're doing. But I, because like, you know, I always like to doubt things a little bit and keep myself neutral if I can. But I'm very much, I, I see it being plausible that this could be what they're planning to do. Whether it's a large coordinated attack between all governments, mm, I don't know, like, People are people are stupid inherently a lot of the time, and governments aren't that efficient. So I don't know if they'd all be able to coordinate that well. Let's be honest. But yeah, I think it could be an overall thing that they're trying to do. I think the energy fud is the dumbest thing ever. You can build more power plants. There's going to be new technologies coming out for energy in the future. So to me, that's a, a non-issue. But I do wonder what would happen if they decided to outlaw Bitcoin. Um, mm. Would there be pushback or would people just accept a fiat dollar or a digital dollar? I mean, like a crypto dollar. I, I think there would be there would be pushback. Um, but how strong would it be strong enough? Right. Yeah, I, I, I think I think uh, it the pushback is totally dependent on how much information the pe um, people have about Bitcoin. If if people do not know enough about Bitcoin, then definitely there's enough room for government to plant their own propaganda in mm. their minds. So the less people know. The more they don't care about the future of Bitcoin, the more the government can actually go ahead with their, you know, can actually press ahead with their agenda. So it's basically dependent. I think people who might push back, are, you know, people in the industry, people who own businesses, the whole business, um, the whole uh, cryptocurrency value chain, down to the last man. So I think if we don't increase that number, you know, significantly over the next, you know, decade, then if if the government, if it's if it's you know actually comes to fruition that government does actually have an agenda or they do you know push for the agenda, then I I'm afraid for the future of cryptocurrency. That's fair. Uh, I think I think yeah, pretty fair sort of criticisms, attacks, etc. Um, from our part to the government, I suppose on that side of things. Um, but yeah, I worry that like that that, that could happen. Um, I think you got to worry. Uh, the other thing to sort of be concerned with is that 
you know, once you've kind of orange pilled, uh, I guess you'd call it, and you're like, you know, seen the light when it comes to Bitcoin, um, you can definitely come across as like the excitement is there, right? So if we try and talk to a friend and it's like, and if you try and get them to understand something and you're trying to be calm at first and maybe they don't get it, then you're like, God, don't you see? And then you get really excited and then that just turns people away, right? It's like those ultra like scary Christian people in the street that try to like turn you into a whatever like their churches and it like you're like no i'm good i'm good and like so there's always that worry i suppose so what you gotta do is just try and educate in like a chilled out calm manner and to be honest things like nft art and nfts i think honestly are really good for bitcoin because it's bringing a lot of people in who i'm getting calls and messages from people like old friends and stuff who never had any interest in crypto or making money like from it until now they're like oh i'm into art i'm into this like i'd like to learn oh is that can i not do it on bitcoin no, you can't. Why? And then they go, oh, but can I buy Bitcoin? And then they actually get into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies from there. So you also have to consider that uh, CBDCs could be a huge stimulus to hyper Bitcoinization because people, if they can just go and exchange dollars for Bitcoin seamlessly on any exchange, you could see people reject in mass uh, the CBDC as just another shit coin and exit True. for Bitcoin. So who knows? Yeah, we'll find out. I guess. Yeah, we'll find out. But um yeah, no, really like an interesting sort of theory to, to be brought up there. Um, so we'll see how it goes, everyone. And uh, maybe in this time next year, we'll all be talking about the Bitcoin ban or something. <laughs> um, but anyway, on that sort of bad note, um, here is some good news for you because we're going to head out now. Um, but we leave you, as always, with uh, about 60 seconds, probably, I don't know, uh, of good news. So <clears throat> here goes. A good Samaritan saves a farmer's pig calling 911 after seeing the farmer's barn on fire during a live stream. For the first time in 170 years, the black-browed babbler bird, last seen in the Borneo, has now been seen in Indonesia. For the first time, an endangered harlequin toad has been bred in an English museum. Fiji's corals are starting to bounce back after having been reduced to rubble in a historic storm. A paralyzed man who was photographed cleaning plastic from a river in India has gone viral and has been showered with gifts to help better his life. Chicago coffee shop owner has collected 6,000 warm coats for the homeless and delivered them to people in need with hot cups of coffee. A solar-powered car with a 1,000-mile quoted range has received 7,000 pre-orders for a 2021 delivery. 12 countries have now built roads out of recycled plastic, and they perform just as well as asphalt. And lastly, Yale scientists have successfully repaired injured spinal cords using patients' own stem cells. That's it. That's your uh, good news for the week. Uh, Ricardo, Jerry, thank you so much for, for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you to all those listening out there. We really appreciate you guys and gals. Uh, tune in next week. We've got a pretty uh, exciting episode coming up. I won't release any more information, but uh, yeah, uh, everyone have a great week and uh, buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin.